This scene of blowing grass and green trees would hardly make one think of an African country only just north of the equator. Yet up here on the high central plateau to the north of Ethiopia, the harsh desert environments of the lowlands seem very far away. This upland area around Gonda, just north of Lake Tana, is home to the Amhara people, whose language, Amharic, is the official national tongue. Gonda nestles below a range of protecting hills. Once the capital of Ethiopia in the 17th and 18th centuries, today it is a sprawling and pleasant country town. Yet existence for most of its inhabitants in the surrounding area is simple and countrified. With the family as its most important unit and a basic subsistence as its main focus, life is generally simple, straightforward and uncluttered. This lady is cooking injera, the staple item of any traditional Ethiopian meal. Washing of either clothes or bodies is a communal affair. This is Gonda's main river, but it doesn't always flow quite so generously, and availability of clean drinking water is frequently a major problem in the area. Yet its people seem happy and content in this simple environment where there is freedom to run and laugh and enjoy the business of living. High above the town, where the majority of people live, in simple surroundings, life seems to have changed little in the last few centuries. Each has his daily duties to perform to ensure that life runs smoothly. Children go to school for three or four hours a day, and then must either help in the fields or are free to enjoy the sunshine and their surroundings. Life in the town is very different. The centre of Gondo was rebuilt by the Italians in the 1930s. Its open central piazza area with its colour washed telecommunications building and busy hotels gives Gonda a bustling and urban feel. Its ancient blue and white taxis are a common sight but for shorter journeys the primitively built horse-drawn garries give Gonda a particular atmosphere. Communal minibuses are also an inexpensive option for travel to and from the outlying village areas, although the roads take their toll on the suspension. Fourteen students from Dr. Chaloner's Grammar School are flying over the high Ethiopian plateau on their way to visit Gonda and the students of the facilities comprehensive secondary school. This is one of the group visits from Chaloners to Gonda, a major event in the programme of Gondolink, the first ever full linking with an Ethiopian school. The lads are taking a tonne of books for the school library and have all sorts of projects planned for their two weeks stay. Fantastic. Without more ado and their feet firmly on Gonda soil, the party transfers to a bus. It takes them through the picturesque countryside and then on up into the town and directly to the facilities hotel, which is to be their home for the next fortnight. This is injera and um, curry, chicken, and uh, that's about it really. Do you like it? Yeah, I do, it's really nice. 
it's yeah. very different from English food, but it's enjoyable, yeah? Great. A couple of hours later, and they are in the market area, impatient to see the sights and to try out their bargaining skills. <laughs> the local kids are as fascinated by the visitors as the Challoners lads are by the sights and smells of this new and far off country. The next thing on the schedule is a visit to the Royal Enclosure, just above the market area. Started by King Facilities in the early 17th century, the enclosure has many castles in a variety of different styles, each attributed to different monarchs of that era. The architecture, apparently a mixture of Ethiopian and Portuguese with elements of Indian, is the chief attraction for the few adventurous tourists who find their way to the town. For the Challoners boys, it is also a chance to relax and be peaceful after the stresses of the journey. These ancient stones remind one of the past glories of Gonda, in real contrast to the dusty bustle of the town just outside the walls. The other great tourist site of Gonda lies about a mile away on the edge of the town. This is the secluded church of Deborah Baran Selassie. Encircled by ancient walls, this untypically rectangular church escaped the ravages of foreign invasions over the centuries. Despite its solitude and peaceful surroundings, it houses some of the most wonderful Christian painting to be seen on the African continent. The facilities comprehensive secondary school lies half a mile out of town and nestles in a grove of eucalyptus and acacia trees. This is the focus of Gondolink, a mixed school with students from the age of 14 upwards where all classes are taught in English. The classrooms are grouped in three distinct compounds and are sturdy but simple buildings which are very much beginning to show their age. 
The students in their cream-coloured uniforms are smiling and welcoming. There are 6,000 of them, with half attending in the morning and half in the afternoon. The road outside the school is a sight to behold, especially when morning and afternoon shifts replace each other. Inside Compound 1, things are peaceful, with students enthusiastically looking forward to their education. This is the English teacher, Freddy Enyu, the Gonda coordinator of Gonda Link. Here comes the bus. The bus is going. There goes the bus. Or you can say, there it goes. Lessons yes. delivered in English cover all major disciplines, including games. The Gonda students have been very keen letter writers, as shown in our Gondolink mural on the front of the school. Over 200 young people write to each other, telling of their everyday lives, their families, their schools and their aspirations. The letters are fascinating, and serve to show us all what clear similarities there are between the students of our contrasting cultures. We quickly saw that the facility's library was greatly in need of English books. We have managed to transport a large number of books to Gonda. These have been provided by donations and charity shops in the Amersham area. Each book is marked with the Gonda Link stamp, showing the market house in Amersham and Fussell's Castle in Gonda. Redecoration of classrooms has also been an ongoing task, shared very equally by students of Dr Chaloner's and facilities pupils. Certainly, what they have lacked in technique, they have made up for in willingness and enthusiasm. One of the big tasks of the 1998 group visit was the redecoration of the school's welcome arch over the main pupil entrance. A thick coat of rust had largely obscured the Amharic writing, so a complete job had to be planned. A small group of volunteers sweated long and hard under the Ethiopian sun to make sure that it was finished in time. The heart of our Gondolink project is undoubtedly the teaching of English at the facilities school. Classes are so large that the potential for developing spoken English is very limited. The Chaloner students have tried to give small group tuition and this is where our Gonda Gap scheme has come into play. Generously sponsored by bursaries from business and other groups, pairs of free university Chaloner students live and teach in Gonda for three month periods. I became tired of these stories. He stopped and said, let us just see how wonderful you are. This has proved a valuable and memorable experience for all concerned. But whether it's with the Gondagat students or with the visiting Chaloner's groups, it's on the sports field that the competitive instincts show themselves. The Chaloner's visitors must soon be on their way back to England and they entertain their Ethiopian hosts with a surprise party. This trip has confirmed for us once again that our link is a very positive force. The young people from both our countries are gaining so much from their communications with each other. We must make sure that our Gonda link continues to go from strength to strength. People are saying, well, this is good. It has started, it's giving um, some benefit to the school. Students are really uh, being motivated. 
and um, especially those students who have close contact with the GAP students are better in their expression, in their interaction. For this reason, um, well, it will continue.